committees. There are political action committees, not just of businesses, but of unions. I'm for no political action committee, individual contributions only, and no super PACs. And I believe Congress can craft legislation with presidential leadership to stop political action committees. Big money that funnels through the PACs is the greatest hindrance, in my opinion, to free and open elections and freedom and democracy in this country. We threw off the king in the time of the revolution because of heavy handedness. We need to throw the PACs out now and vote for third parties that will stand up for America. All right. I'm reminded that this is a rebuttal one minute. You can use it or not use it, Governor. Well, I think that when it comes to political campaign contributions, that uh, candidates should be required to wear NASCAR-like jackets with patches on the jackets commensurate. So what's really needed is 100 percent transparency. I will tell you that regardless of whether or not Romney gets elected or Obama gets elected, three things are going to happen. We're going to find ourselves with a continued heightened police state in this country. We're going to find ourselves continuing to militarily intervene in the world, which results has resulted in hundreds of millions of enemies to this country that wouldn't otherwise exist. There's a reason why we shouldn't be using drones. It's because we don't just take out the target. We take out a lot of innocent civilians in these countries where these drones attack. All right. And then lastly, we are going to find ourselves in a continued state of unsustainable spending okay. and borrowing to the point that we are going to experience a monetary collapse unless we fix this. Well, thank you, Governor. Tonight's uh, second question, all questions submitted by social media, was submitted by Jeff Tangway of Colorado via Facebook. The question is, in what ways does the war on drugs impact Americans, and how could these effects be reduced? Is there a more efficient way to deal with the issue of drug use in America? Two minutes, Jill Stein. Rocky, actually. Rocky, you go first on this one. Oh, Rocky goes first. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you for you. correcting You're welcome. me. Okay. The war well, we, on... Wait, just so we understand, as each question comes up, a different person. How about person opening starts. statements? A different person start. Did we have opening statements? Unfortunately, no. We didn't. No. Okay, Grassroots. To? To? <laughs> Let's go ahead and do opening. Let's do opening statements. My apologies. I, I didn't know we had opening statements. I thought we were right to the question. So two, two minutes. So let's start on the left there, and then we'll go with our second question, starting with Rocky. Opening statements, two minutes each. Okay, this will be Jill opening Stein. statements, and then we'll go to the second <laughs> question. Thank Jill, you. Jill Stein, please. Thank you, Gary. Good, Jill. Oh, okay, great. Thank you. <laughs> Always glad to lead. <laughs> the American people are in crisis. We are losing our jobs, decent wages, our homes by the millions, affordable health care and higher education. Mm -hmm. The climate is in meltdown and our civil liberties are under attack. The wealthy few are richer than ever, rolling in more dough than ever, and the political establishment is not only not making it better, they're actually making it worse, imposing austerity on everyday people while they continue to squander trillions of dollars on wars for oil that we don't need, on Wall Street bailouts, and tax breaks for the very wealthy. The American people, the American people are at the breaking point, and we need to turn that breaking point in this election into a tipping point to take back our democracy and the peaceful, just, green future that we deserve. And we do that by standing up and making sure that everyday people have a voice in this election and a choice at the polls that's not bought and paid for by Wall Street and by advancing the critical solutions that the American people are clamoring for by large majorities. Our campaign is calling for a Green New Deal to create 25 million jobs, end unemployment, jumpstart the green economy, and that means putting a halt to climate change 
and making wars for oil obsolete. We're calling for health care as a human right through Medicare for all and for bailing out the students, not the banks, and making public Hi, higher Joe, education free. Joe, time's up. By the way, it was, not in my, Governor, it was not in my notes about an opening statement, so I apologize. There should have been an opening statement, but it was not my in apologies. my notes because I follow my notes. <laughs> I'm a Jewish guy from Brooklyn. We do what we're told. <laughs> Rocky, Larry, open. Larry, more people are here to listen to you than us. Thank you for being here and giving us Thank this you. opportunity. Rocky, two minutes. We are at a pivotal moral point in our nation's history. We've all suffered through the sellout of our government to Wall Street. Young people are burdened with crushing record tuition debt. Millions of families have lost their homes. Retirement accounts have been decimated, while Wall Street fat cats who are buying our elections have made out like bandits. We've never had the disparity in income and wealth that we see between the very wealthy and all the rest of us since the 1920s. Our poverty rate has never been so high since 1965, child poverty and infant mortality rates in the United States are next to the worst in the industrialized world and among 50 nations. The United States has the worst rate of women dying in connection with pregnancy and childbirth. And under Obamacare, there will be 30 million people without essential health care by the year 2022. And during the Bush and the Obama years, our Constitution has been shredded while the imperial presidency has expanded with presidents who think they can unilaterally take us to war, often on a pack of lies, with presidents who think the federal government should have the authority to round anyone up, including U.S. citizens, and imprison them up to the rest of their lives without charges, without trial, without legal representation and without the right of habeas corpus. And our elected officials are sound asleep when the Pentagon is warning that climate change is a greater long-term security risk to the United States than terrorism. Okay. So if you like the way things are going, vote Democratic or Republican. If you want real change, vote your conscience, vote justice. Opening. Economic justice, social okay, justice, okay, and Rock. environmental justice. Back to our opening after the first question, opening statement from Virgil Good. <clears throat> thank you, Larry. I want to say thanks to Jill, Gary, and Rocky for being here on the four issues I'm going to address right now. You can deduce their uh, positions from what I say. But I'm going to name four positions that I am very different from Ob uh, Barack Obama and Mitt Romney. First, Obama and Romney both claim that they were and still are for a balanced budget. Reality. The Obama budget this year was one trillion in deficit. The Paul Ryan budget, which passed the U.S. House, was 600 billion in deficit. I have the courage to submit a balanced budget if I'm elected president right after I'm inaugurated. Secondly, I am for jobs in America for American citizens first and the only candidate that has called for a near complete moratorium on green card admissions to the United States until unemployment is under 5%. It makes no sense to bring in so many foreign workers when unemployment is so high in this country. <laughs> Secondly, third. We're running close we, on time, go ahead. Right. We need to end super PACs and political action committees that would be one of the best things that would open up our country for more democratic process and a greater voice by the people. And lastly, we need term limits. It's time to focus on doing the best job in Congress instead of the next election and the next fundraiser. And now an opening statement from Governor Johnson. The country is in really deep trouble. We should not bomb Iran. We should get, we should end the war in Afghanistan tomorrow, bring the troops home tomorrow. 
Marriage equality is a constitutionally guaranteed right on par with civil rights of the 60s. Let's end, <clears throat> Let's end the drug wars. Legalize marijuana now. Let's repeal the Patriot Act. I would have never signed the National Defense Authorization Act allowing for you and I as U.S. citizens to be arrested and detained without being charged. That's the reason we fought wars in this country. I promise to submit a balanced budget to Congress in the year 2013. That is a $1.4 trillion reduction in federal spending. If we don't do this now, we are going to find ourselves in a monetary collapse, and a monetary collapse very simply is when the dollars we have in our pocket don't buy a thing because of the accompanying inflation that goes along with borrowing and printing money to the tune of 43 cents out of every dollar we spend. I'm the only candidate that wants to eliminate income tax, eliminate corporate tax, abolish the IRS, and replace all of that with one federal consumption tax, the fair tax. I think it reboots right. the American economy. It's the answer to, it's the answer to our exports. It's the answer to American okay. jobs. Okay, two minutes, all right. Now, thank you, Gary. We'll now get to the second question. I'll repeat it and we'll start to go around with, with Rocky. In what ways does the war on drugs impact Americans? How could the effects be reduced? Is there a more efficient way to deal with the issue of drug use in America that was submitted by Jeff Tangway via Facebook? The war on drugs has been catastrophic for our country, a waste of national treasure and unbelievable human tragedy. I remember when Bert Stringfellow came to me and told me about his son, Corey, who had been sentenced on his first drug offense to 15 and a half years in a federal penitentiary. Well, when I became mayor, I worked really hard with the Clinton White House, and on the day that President Clinton left the White House, he signed a presidential pardon, saving Corey Stringfellow a decade in a federal penitentiary. <laughs> Weldon Angeles is sitting in a federal penitentiary today with a 55-year sentence for selling marijuana on three occasions because the informant said there was a gun around somewhere, not that he'd used it, that there was a gun present. So with gun enhancements, mandatory gun enhancements, and the judge that, who had to enter the sentence said it was an outrage, it was unjust, but 55 years. This is the kind of human toll in this country. We don't just need to legalize marijuana. We need to end drug prohibition just like we ended alcohol prohibition and treat drug use and abuse as a public health and education issue and get it entirely out of the criminal justice Thank system. We, we have the largest incarceration rate in the world by far. We have 5% of the world's population and 25% of the world's prison population. We have more people in prison and jails in this country on drug offenses than Western Europe has in their prisons and jails on all offenses. Ten seconds. This has to end. We, the American people, need to come together. Right, left, it doesn't matter about partisanship. We need to demand immediately right. an end to this insane war on drugs. <laughs> Virgil Good. Thank you. I I'm an advocate of a balanced budget now, not 10 years down the road, and I would cut federal spending on the war on drugs. However, drug use is primarily a state issue, not a federal issue, but there are federal laws. I am not, and this is going to not set well with most of you, I am not for uh, legalizing marijuana use or other drug use. Uh, if we cut back on the war on drugs, that would be a minor part of the federal budget. About $12 billion is being spent this year out of a $3.8 trillion budget on the war on drugs. 
but a lot of small things. I'm not for funding Planned Parenthood. I'd take that to zero. I am.